Look how fast that was. That's so nuts. It keeps your session open. That's killer. And it can even show you icons. Look at that. I'm using my mouse right now. Such a cool tool. This thing's kind of magic. How amazing is that? It's powerful. I mean, look at that. That's a superpower. 37 Linux commands. You will not believe the last few. Let's go. NCDU. Find out what's taking up so much space on your hard drive. It's like DF and DU, but better. Because it's visual and interactive. Woohoo! I can delete stuff right here. And even drill down into folders. Duff, the prettier version of DF. It shows you drive usage, but it just looks nicer. Rip grep. Grep, but with coffee. Powered by Rust, it can do things like quickly finding errors in your logs. <laughs> Man, look how fast that was. Find all your Python functions. <laughs> That's so nuts. Or files that mention an API key. Seriously, it just makes grep cry. Now, when you're traveling, you'll want to use Mosh to connect to your remote servers. Why? It's like SSH, but it supports roaming. Lose your connection? Go from Wi-Fi to cellular? It keeps you connected, keeps your session open. That's killer. So we'll jump into my remote server at Hostinger the sponsor of this video. I forgot my password. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Thankfully, I can log into my hosting your panel and from the management console, change my password. Okay, let's see if that worked. And hold up, it doesn't work because I'll need Mosh installed on both sides. That's how it maintains that connection. Thankfully, I can log into hosting your in my browser terminal, get that installed, and let's try it again. Boom. So as long as you have Mosh installed on both sides, connection maintained. Now, while we're sitting here in my hosting your VPS, let me show you another command. This is LSHW. This will show me everything I need to know about the hardware resources in my system. I mean, it shows you everything. But if you want to find out just about the CPU, we can do this. LSHW, do a tick C, and let's say CPU. Just the CPU info, AMD Epic. We can do the same thing for memory. Network. Disks. And by the way, you do get those specs for $6.99 a month. It's a whole home lab in the cloud. Host some websites, run some Docker containers, practice some Linux commands. And if you use my code network Chuck, the price goes down, which is a fun feature. Picture this, ping and traceroute have a baby. That's MTR. And that was weird. This tracks latency and packet loss hop by hop. Live. It's amazing. FD. It's like find, but it has less letters. Also, it's better. Better default settings like searching recursively, case insensitive, ignores hidden files and directories, and it has colorized output by default and it's often faster. FZF or Fuzzy Finder, interactive filtering of any list or pipe. We can look through our history, pipe it into FZF, and we can search through it. It's really powerful when you chain commands together, doing something crazy like this so I can easily kill a running process. Ranger is like a GUI file manager, but it's in the terminal. It has some Vim goodness, bulk renames, previews. That's kind of awesome. I don't use CD anymore, I use Zoxide. It's like CD, but it's more forgiving. It will look at frequent and recently used directories and rank them. But check this out. I'm in the root right now. Normally, I'd have to type in tilde for my home directory to get the downloads. But no, Z has learned me. I can simply type in downloads, and it takes me right there. If I type in ZI and hit enter, it'll actually use FCF to give me a selection of my directories, interactive. I don't use LS anymore either. I use EXA. It's got better color coding, tree view built in, and it can even show you icons. Look at that. Glances is your all-in-one stat dashboard. It shows you pretty much everything from a glance, and it has a ton of options. You can run it as a web server, which I could not get to work. It didn't show me anything, but it does run an API, so you can monitor your stuff remotely. IO top, see what's stressing your disks out. It'll show you a top style list of the processes using the most disk IO, and it's updating in real time. If you want to know every single little detail about a file, look no further than stat. Often built into your operating system, we'll type it in, Look for a file, and it tells you everything from the day it was born, I know number, and if we do dash F, it'll show us file system specific information like the ID. Definitely one of the nerdier commands, but still pretty cool. DSTAT, it's a combined timeline view of exactly what you wanna see. CPU, RAM, disk, network memory. Run it by itself, or add some options, like top CPU. This combines aspects of VMstat, IOstat, IFstat, and NetStat, kind of all in one. I use the watch command all the time. It reruns any command every so many seconds you set. So I might say watch dash n every half a second for the NVIDIA dash SMI command. And I can monitor my GPU because it's executing that command every half a second. Progress is a powerful command. Watch this. Type it in here. And right now it's showing me the progress of a secure copy happening in one of my TMUX sessions. See, there it is right here. And I can actually type this in on the other side although it's kind of weird on the metrics. It can monitor the status on any one of these commands. Progress can also monitor multiple commands at once. Now we used to use dig for DNS lookups. That's kind of messy. 
dog is better. I mean, look at that. It's got some nice colors. Can do DNS over TLS. Although NASA wouldn't let me. You can output it in JSON. It's powerful. Now you may have heard of TCP dump or even T-Shark, but you know what's better? Term Shark. It's essentially a terminal user interface for T-Shark. <laughs> I mean, look how fun this is. I'm using my mouse right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's filter by DNS. <laughs> oh my gosh, is hosting or using Proxmox? Ah, this is fun to see. Let's keep that PCAP. We can actually load in that PCAP again and examine it. Such a cool tool. This one might feel basic, but it's very fun. LSOF dash I, and then let's specify a port. Let's say port 22. This will show us the process that owns that port or the one that's using it. Let's check out port 80. Docker's using that one. There's something I've learned 40 times and I still forget how to do it. Subnetting. Thankfully, there's a command line tool for that. It's called IPCalc. It's a quick subnet calculator that'll spit out ranges, mask, wildcard info, just from using CIDR. Check this out. Let's do IPCalc for 10.7.8.94 slash, let's do a weird one, 18. All the info right there. Wormhole, peer-to-peer, end-to-end encrypted file transfer. This thing's kind of magic. With one command, I'll start to send my file, put it through a wormhole. It spits out this command. And over here in my hosting or VPS, I input that command in and start to receive. How amazing is that? Oh, and by the way, that can be peer-to-peer -peer or with a relay if you're dealing with a firewall. Why is your system starting up so slow? What's causing it? Who do we blame? We can figure it out right now. Sorry, that was a lot of energy. With the system D dash analyze command and then add blame at the end, showing you which services take the longest on the last boot up. We can also do critical chain highlighting the critical path of dependencies, helping us to understand the bottlenecks caused by sequential initialization. PS, I'm not using PS anymore. <laughs> that was lame. I'm using Prox. It's the prettier, more friendly version of PS AUX. I can sort by CPU, view a tree, way better than PS. Lazy Docker is a treasure. Check this out. One command, we get an interactive terminal user interface for Docker. And you can do everything. It's probably my new favorite tool. I love rsync for file transfers. It's smart, delta only, so it only syncs the differences. It can resume broken transfers and mirrors over SSH. Definitely the best way to copy directories or large files. Did you know that RM doesn't actually remove a file? It just unlinks it from the file system, but it's still there until it gets overwritten. If you really want it gone, you'll want to use shred. Shred overwrites a file multiple passes before it deletes, thwarting data recovery. More utils gives us more utils, like this. Use the TS command to add timestamps to anything you're doing. Use error no to find out what error numbers mean. Use IF data to look at your network interfaces more simply. You get much cleaner output. Use VIDIR to edit your directory names in your text editor, which seems very dangerous. I'm scared. Vibe allows you to insert your text editor in the middle of a Unix command pipeline and edit the data that is being piped between programs. You're gonna love this one. UNP will unpack any archive. I wish I would have found this one way earlier. What it's doing under the hood is pretty fun. It actually guesses based on the archive type what the command should be. JQ is the JSON lightsaber. It will query and transform JSON outputs. I can do amazing one-liners using JQ to grab exactly what I wanna see. Getting pretty crazy with my output. Task Warrior is task management from the CLI. You really never have to leave. Check this out. We can add a task, list our tasks, how cool is that? Mark task done. <laughs> it told me I have more urgent tasks. I kind of love this. I actually might start using this. Hands down the most amazing command on this list. ASCII cinema or ASCINEMA. You can record your terminal sessions into small text-based cast files. Watch this. I'm recording. And I'll do some stuff. Hit Control D to finish, save it locally, and we can play it back. <laughs> Look at that, that's awesome. It's like it's actually in the terminal. You can pause it with the space bar, go in here and copy the text, keep playing. I mean, that's so fun. You can self-host a server that you could upload these recordings to. And here's another command you can use with ASCII Cinema, ASCINEMA, AG, another tool they make. will convert your command line video into a GIF or a GIF. I'm not sure how to say it anymore. That is amazing. I'm just thinking like when I want to show someone something very quick in the command line, just make a quick GIF, GIF. 
<laughs> send it to them. Fabric, if you're not using it, you're crazy. Use the CLI to interact with the AI. I've shown it before, but check this out. Combine it with the commands we already know. For example, I might type in my history and ask it to summarize my most used commands. <laughs> Look at that, that's a superpower. Look at your open ports, get some recommendations. Use it to analyze your syslog. And this I'm still exploring, but the possibilities are endless. Use AI or things like Olama to help you craft commands on the fly. I'm a big fan of Olama because you run it here locally. Check this out. I'll create a custom Olama agent. Its only job is to help me create commands on the fly. And then I simply run the model and say things like create a command that will find out what is taking up all of my disk space. <laughs> Look how fast that was. Or tell it to build an nmap command. It's amazing. Which command was your favorite? Comment below, or did I miss something cool? Let us know. Share with the community. And by the way, have you hacked the YouTube algorithm today? Make sure you do hit that like button, subscribe, comment, because you gotta hack YouTube today. Ethically, of course. I'll catch you guys next time.